So I've used a lot of different Mac apps, and today I'll show you the ones that have made a legitimate impact on my daily workflow and productivity. To start off, Raycast is an app that I originally downloaded a couple of months ago to simply replace Spotlight Search, as I thought it looked better and had a couple of cool built-in features like the time zone and currency conversions. It wasn't until I really started to look into this tool that I realized just how powerful it is. I now have set up dozens of keyboard shortcuts to do a variety of different tasks, and I'm quickly becoming a Raycast fanatic. There's so many things it does out of the box or by downloading an extension that can entirely replace some apps. One of the first things I did was set up hotkeys to open up all of my most used apps simply by pressing option and usually the first letter of that app's name. Option V is VS Code, option F is Figma, and option W is Framer where I built my website. One app that I was going to include in this video was Handmirror which lets you quickly view your webcam before going into a call, but I found out that this this is available in Raycast with the open camera command. If you find yourself constantly typing out the same text, it's worth creating a snippet. This allows you to specify a keyword that whenever you type it, will expand into what you set. You can include variables like the current date or your copied text so that this can be more dynamic. For a while, I've recommended you guys download Rectangle with every new Mac you get as it provides the same window snapping features from Windows, which so long as you are comfortable learning the shortcuts, Raycast has as built in. Recently, I downloaded SIP, which was a menu bar color picker that wasn't restricted to just your browser like an extension would be, and then immediately copied the hex code to your clipboard. This was super useful, but with the color picker extension on Raycast, you can get this same effect by using the pick color command, which I've set a custom hotkey to with option shift P. Pasting the code into Raycast, you can then preview the color and ensure it's the one you're looking for. There's a ton of other extensions that let you extend the functionality of Raycast to use tools like GitHub, Linear, and Notion to perform quick actions. For example, with the Notion extension, I've set up keybinds to instantly open different pages within my workspace. Anything that you find yourself doing frequently can probably be automated using an extension, or if one doesn't exist and you're tech savvy, you can either write a script or create an extension yourself with the API. The last point I want to make is on Raycast Pro. I didn't think I'd ever find enough value with it to drop $10 a month, but as I've started to use it more and more recently, I pulled the trigger. The biggest selling point for me was cross Mac syncing as I use my 16 inch MacBook as my work machine and don't want to go through the hassle of reconfiguring everything. They also have built in AI that at first I thought was kind of gimmicky, but having quick access to ChatGPT with web searching can often be more convenient than a Google search. Now, super Superhuman is in that same realm as Raycast in that it's primarily built to take advantage of keyboard shortcuts to make the email experience faster and more efficient. $30 a month for it sounded insane, and to be fair it still kind of is, but I managed to grab a free month and finally gave it a shot. Immediately I was hooked, and at this point I've gotten a hang of all the bindings, so I do go through my email much faster than before. Hitting E marks an email is done, and H lets you quickly schedule it for later if you don't have time to write out a response or you're waiting to follow up. It also shows you when people have opened your emails, which lets you respond to them quicker. It has AI built in that's pretty good if I just need to send a basic email to someone, but you can also create snippets, much like in Raycast, that use variables like the person's name. This is great so that you're not manually typing out the same response over and over to similar emails. I think the price is steep, but for me, I get quite a lot of emails hitting my inbox every day, and I'm awful at remembering to reply, so this makes the process a lot smoother. I'll put a link down below that right now is giving you two free months, so when you're done watching, give it a shot and let me know how you like it. Now, this next app is one that I think every Mac user should have. App Cleaner makes it so much easier to delete apps because by simply dragging over the icon, it will get rid of the app itself along with any files associated with it. These will then be put into the trash, so make sure you go and clear that. I try to keep my trash, desktop, and downloads clear at all times because this makes the Mac look a lot cleaner. Now, now, the next app is Latest, which solves the hassle that is keeping apps updated from both the App Store and Internet by putting them all in one place. What I recommend doing is getting in the habit of every afternoon or night you finish up work, start all of the available updates, and then make sure you have Amphetamine downloaded. The last thing you want is for your Mac to fall asleep in the middle of updating Xcode, so this lets you keep the Mac awake for a specified amount of time until a file downloads or while an app is running. So before we get into the rest of the apps, one worth mentioning is the sponsor of today's video, Setapp, which gives you access to over 200 different Mac apps. I'm excited to be working with them as I've used Setapp for 
over a year. And there's a few apps included that I use on a daily basis. I was able to get you guys a 30 day free trial instead of the usual seven. So head down below if any of these apps I mentioned look interesting. The first of these is Drop Zone, which hides in the menu bar, only revealing itself if you drag a file over it. Downloading the install application extension, you can drag the zip file for an app you just downloaded and it will unzip, run the install script, and then dispose of all the downloaded files automatically. Another of my favorite features is the desktop picture, which lets you drag over a wallpaper like one from my prison pack and instantly apply it. I don't actually want Drop Zone visible in the menu bar though, so downloading Bartender, which is also on Setup, lets you choose which of the items you want to keep outside, putting the rest in this drop down menu. I try to keep this to a minimum, but there is still quite a bit here. This leaves the battery indicator, a drop down calendar, a timer that tells me how long I've been working, and information about my current or upcoming calendar event. I also added very late into this video a water reminder that simply every 15 minutes tells me to take a sip. Yoink is another app similar to Drop Zone as it gives you a place to keep your files. What's different though is you drag a file to the edge of the screen, drop it in, and then no matter where on the Mac you go, it will stay visible. This is great if you're transferring a large amount of files all at once. Last month, I started using Rise to track my time, and I found it really useful to keep me productive. It tells you how long you spend in every app and individual website up to the minute, which is what sold me. I want to see over a week-to-week -week basis how much of my time goes to random browsing rather than working like I'm supposed to, which is why the built-in Pomodoro timer is great. This lets you set up focused work sessions, which for me have been 30 or 45 minutes, emphasizing the importance of a break in between, even if just for five minutes. I mostly use this when scripting or editing, as these are times where I'm sitting at my desk for a prolonged period of time. This will also give you a pop-up if you're distracted during your focus sessions, which has helped quite a bit. Since using this, I've definitely noticed I've been more focused and can get into that state a lot easier. I still use a physical timer, but pairing the two works well for me. It's $15 a month, which at face value sounds like a lot, but this has gotten me to take more breaks and focus better, which has already saved me hours the last few edits. If you try out Rise and find out it's not for you, Pandan is a free option that serves a similar purpose. It lives in your menu bar so it's out of the way, and while it doesn't track how you're spending your time, you can set up a reminder for a break if you want. What I like about it though is by default, it just sits there and shows you how long you've been working, never telling you to take a break. This is valuable because there are times where I have a 40 minute focus session and don't feel the need to take a break. Now for the past few months, Amy has been my calendar app of choice, and this is mostly because I love its interface. It also has built-in to-dos and an email client, but I honestly don't make much use of those. The emails are still getting there, but they're making a lot of updates to this app and have some really interesting integrations coming up that I can't wait to see. There are times though that I don't wanna go into the app itself and just wanna quickly make an event to remind myself or check what day of the week some date is. This is where Dato comes in as a menu bar calendar. The icon shows the current date and clicking it pops out this date picker along with all of your upcoming events. This syncs up with Google Calendar, so it's perfect for my workflow. After a while of looking for a cross-platform reminders app, I finally landed on Superlist. I love its sleek design across both macOS and Android, but what I really like about it is you can create formatted notes attached to or independent of your tasks. It's similar to Notion, where pressing slash brings up a command menu that lets you quickly create headings, bullets, and so on. I've liked this a lot to build out a list of books I want to read, separating them by category. In my quest to convert as many stock Apple apps to cross-platform ones, Note has still held a tight grip on me. I tried Simple Note and it worked well, but for those random thoughts, I still found myself just opening up the Notes app out of habit. This still happens, but I downloaded Obsidian, which is a much better middle ground in my opinion. The UI first off is far better than both of them, and it lets you use Markdown to style the documents quickly. You can make this fairly organized, use templates, or even create pages like Notion, although this is only on a paid plan. For over a year at this point, my Go to app for taking screenshots has been CleanShot X. This is a lot better in my opinion than the built in tool, but for what it is, the yearly subscription is overpriced. Luckily, it's on setup, otherwise, it'd be hard to justify. What I like most about it though is you can drag your cursor wherever to create a custom frame rather than having to drag out from the corners. In a very close second, I love the screenshots that overlay your window with a shadow over your wallpaper. This looks really good, especially for sharing on social media. There's times where I'll want to copy paste text, but can't. 
which is where the built-in OCR comes into play. This doesn't work very well though when it comes to formatted text, so don't expect to grab code from a tutorial. Lastly, it has a built-in screen recorder that's really solid. You can enable your mic and webcam and it works well. This is best if you need a quick video to send someone, but for longer videos, Screen Studio has been my go-to. This is my favorite app I've come across recently, and you guys have probably seen me using it in the last several videos. This is because it lets you record beautiful videos of your window overlaid on your wallpaper while auto-zooming in on your cursor. I saw this used on a bunch of different landing pages, and I'm so glad that I found it. The auto-zoom works very well the majority of the time, but the built-in editor is simple to use if you want to make any changes. $90 at first seems like a lot of money, but trying to replicate this in any regular video editing software would take ages. They're bringing out a lot more features in the future, like the ability to share a video link, meaning this could be somewhat of a loom alternative in the future. Very excited to see that. Another app I found for making videos is ReCut, and I only just learned about it when researching for this video. This is an absolute lifesaver for video editing, as it takes your footage and will auto-cut any moments of silence, which saves a ton of time editing these voiceovers because I mess up so many times. How it works is you drop in your clip, specify different parameters like how quiet a clip needs to be to be cut, the amount of padding between each cut, and the minimum duration of silence needed. This flexibility lets you meet your editing style, so for me, I try not to do super hard cuts, and this makes sure of that. On an hour-long voiceover, this immediately cuts 10-20 minutes off that duration, inevitably saving me tons of time every week. I initially thought $99 was a big ask, but the value of my time, especially as this is a single-time payment, is far greater than that. Now, if you frequently take photos on your iPhone and send them to your Mac, you might notice they have the HEIC extension. Most of the time this is fine, but the moment you try to upload these to social media, you'll run into compatibility issues, which is why HEIC Converter is such a convenient app to have. Dropping a file into the app brings up a window where you select where to export the converted PNG or JPEG. So those have been all of the apps I've been using recently on my MacBook that have seriously made my life easier and saved a lot of time. Let me know which was your favorite down below and if you want to see how i set up all of my new mags to be most productive go and watch this video here take care